Consumers are developing more sophisticated tastes in Android smartphones when it comes to making a final buying decision in the sub 30,000 rupee category. Considering that prices across markets and industries have grown over the past year or so, even value conscious buyers are now looking at higher budgets than before. So if you're looking to spend less than 30,000 rupees and want premium features, modern hardware and versatile cameras, then we have some phones you should definitely check out. The Xiaomi 11i Hypercharge 5G lives up to its name with 120 watt fast charging and charges its 4500 mAh battery from 0 to 100% in about 20 minutes. Also, the Xiaomi 11i Hypercharge 5G looks smart with its matte glass rear panel but is relatively heavy at 204 grams. Powering the phone is a MediaTek Dimensity 920 SoC with 6GB or 8GB of RAM. With the 11i Hypercharge, you get a 6.67-inch Full HD Plus 120Hz AMOLED display which is crisp, loud stereo speakers, an IR emitter and also 128GB of onboard storage. You get MIUI 12.5 running on top of Android 11. The Xiaomi 11i without the 120W charging costs a bit less and is otherwise nearly identical to the Hypercharge 5G, so you can consider it too if you wish to spend a little less. The few things in the 11i Hypercharge 5G which could be a deal breaker for many are that it comes with too many pre-installed apps and the low light camera performance is average. The Motorola H20 features a powerful 5G ready SoC, a very fluid 144Hz refresh rate display, a versatile set of cameras and an IP52 rating for dust and water resistance. You get near stock Android with a promise of timely software updates with this device. It's slim and light, looks great, but as a result, its relatively low capacity battery requires frequent charging. Also, the low light camera performance needs improvement. If a bloatware free Android experience and slim form factor are what you are looking for, then the Motorola S20 is worth considering. Realme has gone with a suitcase like design for the Realme GT Master Edition. It packs a punch, even though it's not quite an all rounder. The high-quality 120Hz refresh rate Super AMOLED display is good for gaming and watching movies. Under the hood is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 778G processor, which is a worthy upgrade over the 768G and is on par with MediaTek's Dimensity 1200. Camera performance in daylight is quite good, but low-light performance is average and is only saved by a night mode. Battery life is good for a slim mid-range smartphone and it charges from 0-100% to in about 35 minutes. Though the stereo speakers are missing, it does have a 3.5mm headphone jack. Oh, and no IP rating with this one and too many preloaded apps is a downer. The Oppo Reno 7 5G is slim and light and the new laser etched pattern on the back looks good but the entire body is made of plastic which is a downgrade. It uses a MediaTek Dimensity 900 SoC and is only available with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage with a dedicated micro SD card slot. The 4500mAh battery is slightly larger than the one in the previous model. It runs Color OS 12 based on Android 11. The rear camera setup on the Reno 7 5G is much the same as on the Reno 6 and is decent for stills. This is a good phone overall and it performed well in our review but misses out on the stereo speaker setup. The successor to the OnePlus Nord, the Nord 2 sports a full HD plus 6.43 inch AMOLED display and a 90Hz refresh rate. While the latter is a good spec, you should be aware that most of the competition now offers a 120Hz display in this segment. The 4500mAh battery supports 65W fast charging. It is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 1200 AI SoC and is available in 6GB, 8GB and 12GB RAM options. The Nord 2 runs Oxygen OS with the promise of regular updates. The camera performance is good for its price. Daylight photos are sharp but shots taken with the ultra-wide-angle camera aren't great. Close-up and portrait shots come out very well. Low-light camera performance is also good, especially with nightscape mode. Overall, the OnePlus Nord 2 is a good pick for someone on a budget. The POCO F3 GT is designed around gaming features and performance. The good thing for gamers is that it comes with physical gaming triggers. This new model has a premium body with a metal frame and a glass back. 
The big 6.67-inch HDR10 Plus AMOLED display offers a 120Hz refresh rate and a touch sampling rate of up to 480Hz in gaming turbo mode. It runs on a 5G-ready Dimensity 1200 SoC with 6GB or 8GB of RAM. The POCO F3 GT has a triple camera setup that captures average quality photos in daylight as well as low light. On the plus side, the POCO F3 GT delivered a great gaming experience for the price. You also get 67 watt fast charging and stereo speakers with this package. The Mi 11X 5G is a very powerful device thanks to its near flagship grade Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 SoC. The design philosophy is refreshingly plain with no elaborate flourishes and no over the top branding, unlike some of its competitors. General usage and gaming performance is great, and content looks very good on the 120Hz AMOLED display. The phone also comes with stereo speakers. Small touches such as fast charging and IP rating add to the overall pleasant experience. With MIUI, we had to deal with spam notifications during our review. We also noticed that the Mi 11X would get unusually hot when charging. Camera quality on the whole was rather average, though its tele-macro camera is capable of delivering some great shots. The Mi 11X is not the best all-rounder, but it's a strong contender, especially if you're after an SoC that's powerful for a good gaming experience. The Realme X7 Max 5G can be considered a flagship killer as it has class-leading performance with the MediaTek Dimensity 1200 SoC, making it great for gaming. You also get 5G support, studio speakers, great battery life and quick charging. Realme has made the design of the rear relatively subtle, but the basic finish makes this seem like a much less expensive phone. It has a 3.5mm headphone jack as well. Camera performance in low light is disappointing and the micro camera is not very useful at all. However, daytime clicks are good. If you can look past these shortcomings, you'll find that the Realme X7 Max 5G offers very good value for the price. The Samsung Galaxy A52 brings a brand new design for the A-series with its youthful and fashionable appeal. It also offers excellent features such as an IP67 rating, stereo speakers and a 90Hz AMOLED display which is crisp, a combination that's hard to come by in this segment. Even with a lower tier Snapdragon 720G SoC, it manages to deliver an overall solid performance. It ships with the latest One UI skin based on Android 11. There is a bit of bloatware to deal with, which we are not a big fan of. The cameras were solid during the day, tended to fall a bit short in low light. The Galaxy A52 is a compelling offering as you get a good set of features. So there you have it, the best smartphones under 30,000 rupees, tested and reviewed by the Gadgets 360 team. If there's anything more about these devices that you'd like to know, head over to the Gadgets 360's review section for a detailed look. And don't worry, we'll also be posting the links in the description. Also, if you feel there is another phone that deserves a spot on this list, do tell us in the comments section. That's it for this video. We'll see you soon in the next one.